So the next thing that we're going to look at is the iterable type pin. Now, just as a kind of background, uh, when you are defining out, say, a method within a class, let's say you wanted to include a callback. So you would have a method here or some kind of function, and into this you might pass in a value, and you might pass in, say, a callable, which you can type in then to say, well, I can call this. So this just means that we have to pass in uh, some kind of callable. Now, in this case, you would call the function like this, you would pass in a value here, and then you would have to pass in something that was callable like a closure. Now, what we can actually do is use iterable. We're gonna talk about an example where this might be useful. And we're also gonna speak about what actually is iterable, what can be iterated on. And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna create a collection class. Now, you may be familiar with Laravel. We have something called a collection. This means that we can add items to a collection, we can iterate over them, we can use helpful methods. And to make this easier, we're gonna go ahead and uh, use the iterator aggregate interface. Now this means that we have to go ahead and implement a get iterator method, which allows us to use a class like an array. Now this extends traversable, so you can see here, uh, traversable using for each. So hopefully this makes sense, but we're gonna look at an example of this and see how it works. So let's go and just uh, create a constructor here to allow us to pass some items in, and then we'll look at how this, uh, how this might come together. So into this class, we might allow passing in a list of items and we would set that to a property just up here. Now what we could do with this is go ahead and say, create some kind of user class maybe. And this is just gonna be super simple. I'm gonna try and keep this as uh, short as possible. Uh, we may create a couple of users. So let's say user one is a new user. And then we might say that the user one's email address is my email address like so. And then we might do pretty much the same thing for another user like this. And these could be results you get back from your database. It could be uh, from anywhere. What you would do is you would create a new collection. So we could say users equals new collection, passing in an array of them users like so. Now, really what we want to do is on our collection, maybe have methods like count so we could say users count that would be really helpful uh, but we might want to do a for each on this now at the moment obviously this isn't going to do anything if i do for each users as user and then echo out user email we know that what we're trying to do is iterate over a class which doesn't really make sense we just don't see anything now that is where our iterator aggregate comes in. So what we can do is go ahead and implement this. Let's go over to the browser and we'll see an error. Now this contains one abstract method, which is that get iterator method I spoke about. All we do to get around this and allow this to be iterate iterable is implement this get iterator method. All we then do is return a new array iterator on them items. So we just go ahead and pass in this items. What this will now allow us to do is when we use for each on this class or on an object, on a collection object, uh, this will allow us to iterate over these items. So now this will work and we see these two email addresses. So this is nothing really new. It's pretty much always been there and uh, this is just really generally helpful. Now though, what we need to do is think about what happens when we want to pass this around our application. So we have type hinting available for iterable. What this means is anything that can be iterated over. We know that an array is iterate, iterable. We know that this is now iterable. So it means that we can type hint for both circumstances. So it again, just adds a little bit more uh, strict typing to your applications. So let's say out the way of this somewhere we had a mail class and I'm going to make this really, really rough. Inside of this, we might have a method like set recipients. And then into this, we would want to pass in a list of recipients like so. Now, maybe we wanted to accept in either an array of email addresses or a collection of items. Now we can't type into either. If we say array, we can only pass an array in. If we say collection, we can only pass an instance of a collection in. So uh, let's just quickly fill this out just so we can kind of demonstrate it because we're gonna look at some other bits here as well. Uh, inside of this, we might just say this recipients and set that to recipients. And then up here, we would obviously have our recipients property. And what we might also want to do as well is extract out all of the emails to an array just in here. We might have some getters for this later on. 
So inside of this method then, we would want to do a for each, and then into here we would pass in those recipients that we receive in. Each of them would be a recipient, and then what we could do in here is maybe a check to see if the recipient, like so, is an instance of a user model. Now you may not do this, but it's just kind of an example. And then in this case, what we want to do for each of them is add that recipient's email into there like so. Or we may have an interface on our user model and we may have a get email method. So either way, we're just basically setting that to there. Now, otherwise we know that we're just getting an array of values in or something else. So we would just say this emails and then maybe set that directly to the recipient. So essentially what we can do now is for the mail class that we've just created, we could say mail set recipients and we could either pass in like so, like that, or we could pass in a collection of users. And remember this users here is now a collection. So if we were to implement some methods in here, so if we do a var dump on mail, say get recipients, Let's go ahead and implement this very quickly and see what we can do to make this a little bit more strictly typed. So this would return this recipients like so. And then this would also maybe have a method saying something like get emails. So just the emails that have been extracted out that we've already added in. So this should now give us a collection of them recipients. If we just remove the type hint that I added on there to uh, demonstrate earlier, we see a collection of our recipients. And then for the get emails method, we have the following two email addresses. So again, this is a really rough example, but this is something that you may want to do. Now, because we have this problem where we can't type it, hint this to an array, or we can't type hint this to a collection because we know that uh, we may have either, what we can now do is use iterable. And that will take into account either an array or something that is iterable because we know that we are iterating through whatever we're passing in, whether that be a collection because we are extending iterator aggregate, which again further extends traversable, or we're just passing a plain array in. So this will now work regardless. So we can send in a collection of users that works as normal, or we could just send in an array of whatever we wanted like so, and it will just work as normal. Now, what we can also do is type in the return value. So what I'm actually gonna do in here is I'm gonna say that this set recipients uh, mustn't return anything. So we've already covered void return type. I'm gonna set that in there as well. So again, we strictly type that. So we know that we can't return anything. If we do return something in here, then we know that we get an error. Now we can also do the same for get recipients. We're gonna say, well, this returns an iterable or must always return iterable. So we can do that for this. And we can do that for this because we know that these two things here are either an array or a collection. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, I know this was a really long example, but again, it just kind of shows you uh, how this may work in real life. Again, really rough implementation, but we've now seen an example of type hinting what we can pass in, whether it's an array or something that we can iterate over. And we've also looked at how we can check that we are actually returning something that we can iterate over because we know that when we call get emails or get recipients, we need something uh, to iterate over. So it makes sense here to type into it now that we have this available.